talk about one time, I, th I thought you were really vulnerable in the book, where you talked about where you were having a, uh, you were preaching, having some sort of uh, service, and a woman came up and asked you to do something that you didn't really want to do. And I, I think maybe we can just, uh, I'd like you to share that if you would, because I appreciated your vulnerability. And it applies to Christian leaders so often. Yeah, I, it, I was not raised in a charismatic um, environment. I was raised in a very uh, not charismatic environment, let's put it that way. Uh, we had, we were preaching in the Philippines and to a huge, in a very dangerous area, thousands of people there did the altar call. People crushed forward. And they're in the Philippines, they're used to run hard bonky and stuff like this, which you know I, I wasn't. So I jumped off the stage and I was praying with people, um, leading them to Christ. And all of a sudden from the crowd, this woman walks up, severely lame. She could barely walk. She was probably 70 years old or so. And she had a daughter with her. And the daughter could speak English. The, the older woman couldn't. And the daughter says, Pastor, Pastor, my, my mother here, um, you know, she, she, her, she's maimed and, and she wants God to heal her. And I'm like, uh-oh. Like, this is not one of those. I don't know what to do. And uh, I find it's, it's, it's best when you're praying to God to be honest. So... The woman kind of respectfully stood away a little bit, and I got on my knees, and I, I put my hands on this older woman's leg, and I said, Lord, you and I both know I have no idea what I'm doing, um, but if you don't heal her, you and I are both going to look really stupid. <laughs> and that's exactly what I prayed. And uh, I said, please don't not heal her because of my lack of ability or faith. And as I did that, she jumped away from me and started to dance and freak out. And I mean, I'm healed, I'm healed, and jumping up and down, and and running around the crowd. And I, I watched this for about five seconds, sort of my jaw dropped. And uh, all of a sudden I jumped up on the stage and I got out of there because everyone kind of crushed up to me. They all wanted healing now too. And I'm like, hey, I didn't screw up the first one, but I'm not gonna take any more risks. I went and you know, people are like, where's the pastor? The pastor's hiding in the back. And what did, what did God, what did, I mean, wrap that up for us. What, what did God speak to you about that? Then I realized, you know, God may have been getting ready to pour his spirit out in an amazing way that I had never seen before, but I'll never know because I ran and hid. And so I encourage people that even the guy writing the book on courage, the big macho all I cop, I was a coward and people were robbed of their blessing because of me. It's not worth wallowing around in guilt about, but it is something that I need to bring before the Lord and say, I'm so sorry, and never again will that happen to me. And by the way, that did happen. I don't say this in the book. Again, not too much longer after that, where I saw this person come up to get healed by some other people, and it didn't happen, and I grabbed him by the side, and he did get healed too. And so from that moment on, even this non-charismatic had to learn, you know what? All the gifts are still re real, and God is amazing and powerful today, just like he was every other day since he raised from the grave.